Monday, February six. I know it's I know it's Monday and I know it's February. That should be good enough. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So much trouble keeping track of what day it is. But the weekend's over. I've had my little party time. And I, now I have to go back to work and deal with a hostile workplace. Actually, lately it hasn't been hostile for me. But give them some time. I'm sure they'll figure out some, something to do. See, I don't have any, I never have problems with my passengers ever. Never, never, never. I never have a customer problem. I don't know why. I just don't. Well, probably because I don't deal much with affairs. Because that's always the root of the problem. Uh oh. Is affairs. Fair collection system. Speaking of affairs, one of my, uh, I don't see her much anymore, but Janet Talbot. This, uh, very live character from the Pal Garage. You'd think she was still living in Brooklyn the way she talks. She sounds like a Brooklynite. Anyway, she's tough. You don't mess with Janet Talbot. She's really nice and really tough. She's both. It proves that you can be tough and nice. Anyway, she uh, talked about some of her sips at that union meeting. You know, they're giving her her second Ace Award of the Month and they're also giving her her sip at the same time, which is perfect, isn't it? That's what they do here is they, they award you and then they scold you all, in, all at the same time. So you never really know where they're coming or going anyway. She did a very creative presentation at the union meeting. Speaking of the union meeting, it was another knockdown, drag out, crazy kind of, you know, <laughs> the union meeting, you know, it's really not surprising that people don't go to the union meeting. Although, even if I don't say anything there, I know better than open my mouth. Uh, you know, I, I, <laughs> it, you know, the people there, it's just, there's just no decorum at those meetings there's no decorum you have people shouting down each other you have people being rude to each other you have kind of like whoever's got the biggest mouth wins it's it's not a, it's not a productive environment if you want to discuss issues it's a very un whoops look at this whoops it's a very unproductive environment for people to actually discuss issues because it's, there's no uh, freedom of it's it's not it's not coordinated it's not uh, structured you know there's no requirement to be civil even I mean that's part of the thing is that it's you're not supposed to be civil or something I mean that's how the cronyism works is by intimidation you know let's let's shout down the people that don't agree with us okay rather than discuss ideas and be civil about it they like to shout each other down and it's very disturbing you know I just find it disturbing whereas the little discussion group over there on Facebook is a very good place to discuss ideas because you don't have to worry about getting shouted down and get it getting uh, interrupted you know, you type out your thought and other people are free to, to uh, respond to it. Now, we've had some people unhappy with that group and left. Now, I personally don't understand what it exactly was they were unhappy about. It's, it's just a group of people that are expressing ideas. It doesn't mean you have to believe every one of them or subscribe to anybody's I did in particular, uh, but there had been some people who said, oh, I'm not staying in this group, it's to this or it's to that. And I'm, I'm like thinking to myself, that's the most bizarre thing I ever heard, is that you you think there's some kind of uh, agenda in the group. It's not. There's no agenda in that group. It's about the best forum we've, ever, we've had yet for discussion of concepts and ideas. And this was a group started by uh, D. Williams. 
your brothers and sisters won. And I gotta congratulate her for putting, getting that together. It's, uh, and keeping it together. I mean, we're growing it. We're trying to grow that group. I, I'm sort of, I'm adding as many TriMet driver friends as I have. Uh, and I know other people are too. It's very productive. And it could go, it could morph into some real action at some point. I'm hoping it will. But anyway, we had D, D, the little bulldog, Miss D Williams. <laughs> First of all, they made a big deal out of her taking notes with her computer. And this paranoia of information getting out is really, really nuts, okay? It's, it's really nuts. I'm not... What is it they're really scared of? They think the company's going to get a hold of something. Like you're broke? All right. Well, they're broke. Okay, I've said it. Oh, my God. You don't think they know that? <laughs> Shit. You think they can't figure that out or something? I mean, all those financial reports are reported to the, to the government at the end of the year anyway. I mean, and they should be open records. I mean, think about it for a minute. The union is supported by TriMet operators, and our paychecks come from taxpayer funded monies. Okay, this is not free, this is not me deciding to put my money into the union. This is decided by compulsory legislation that we will join the union and we will take our money out of our paychecks, which comes from taxpayer sources of various places, and give it to the union. And the union's operating exactly like TriMet in, in secrecy and paranoia. And therein lies the problem, is that TriMet and the union are very, very similar how they handle things, and a lot of us don't like that. And the paranoia is just crazy, man. I mean, what is it they're scared of in the first place? I mean, what's going to get out? Okay, I can understand some of the personnel issues, like whether you're going to arbitrate or not arbitrate. That should be confidential because that's embarrassing for people to uh, discuss. But I don't see anything else. I mean, I, I make notes, and I publish the notes, and I, I suppose technically I'm in violation of the Secrecy Act of the ATU 757. I'm not supposed to. But in case you haven't noticed, my notes are extremely general in nature. I'm not specific about anything, really. I talk about some specific people that are at the union meeting some specific concepts like you know TriMet's lying about their uh, seven million well it's going to cost us eight million dollars more to bring that in house when they have a third party study a third party study that was completed with TriMet's own data that showed that you're going to actually save money but TriMet says no no we're going to lose money if we do that but they don't they don't have any data to back that up See, TriMet is famous for making proclamations without being required to back up their their proclamation. They, you know, we say we are $17 million in debt. Well, so everybody's supposed to believe that just because they said it. You know, the media doesn't critically ask for evidence of uh, how do you come by this. They say, well, we expect less tax revenue. That's not good enough. We want to see exactly how you come, which tax revenue, what do you have now, what do you expect, not these generalizations. And there was a member at the union meeting, uh, I'm not sure what her name is, but uh, she was making some very excellent comments about, uh, you know, you show us the budget, but we don't actually know what goes into your budget report. We don't know the specifics of those line item figures, you don't bring it out. We just have office supplies. Well, we don't have any idea what office supplies. We have payroll. We don't have any idea who in the payroll, who, who exactly is on the payroll, and how much are they getting. We have, uh, you know, you know what I mean. We have the line item, but we don't have any breakdown of the line item. How the hell are we supposed to give you any real serious input? And of course, the answer is we can't 
because we don't know enough about it. But uh, I congratulate uh, Dee for being tough. She, she rose to the occasion of not backing down. I mean, you got to be kind of crass. I'm not saying you're crass, Dee, but I'm saying you have to be able to. I mean, she used the F word, and I, I think that's great. I, I've never had a problem using it. I mean, something, some descriptions require the F word, and they were ganging up on her, and, uh, you know, John had his cronies there, obviously, and so they ganged up, you know, and that's why I don't open my mouth, because I know that I'm not John Hunt's favorite person. Even though I'm not supporting any more recall efforts of his, I don't condone his. I'm still angry that he has not apologized to Chris Day and paid the expenses for him being pushed out like that. That's an unforgivable act because he took unilateral action against a member without, he didn't follow the established procedure. You need to prefer charges. I'm still, that's my number one issue at this point is that he did that. And he's got away with it. Okay. That's not right and it's not forgivable unless he was to apologize and pay him his expenses that he incurred as a result of that. Now, yeah, the union meetings are not, the free flow of ideas is not what happens there, okay? It's, that's why people don't go. I mean, it's obvious why people don't go because they don't want to deal with that crassness, that rudeness, that, that, uh, that stupidity is deep. The stupidity of people. Why would anybody vote against D being able to take notes on her computer? I I agree with her. That is the most absurd thing I've ever seen. And now I've already known that that's the problem that we we face. Is our membership is not all that bright. They don't really understand the issues, nor do they care about the issues. It's always a case of, oh, well, we don't like him, or we like her, or we owe, owe him, but not them. And that's the problem. It's, it's a, our existence at Tribe is a microcosm of what's happening in America, really. The problem with unions, you can see there's a problem here. It's not, it's not some kind of an abstract concept. There is something wrong with the unions, okay? I'm not afraid to say it but I've said it a million times before, I'd rather have a corrupt union than no union, because at least we still have some measure of protection against the ruthless management here. I wouldn't be here right now if it wasn't for the union, I'm sure. Uh, but you can see how it's kind of a closed loop. You know, the union thing is a closed loop. It's the people in power and their cronies manipulating these meetings there's, it's not a democratic institution because it's cronyism is what it is. There's no real ample opportunity to actually discuss in a rational way any of these issues, okay? There's just none. It's, it's just uh, shouting. And that's, that's not the appropriate methodology for uh, dealing, with, uh, dealing with issues. Shouting doesn't work. Mayhem doesn't work. Union meetings are mayhem. And John John closes off the conversation when he wants to. It's not... Oh, the other thing about that meeting is it, it needs to be... We, we can't be rushed like that. We have to have the opportunity to keep these meetings going at least four hours. There should be a four-hour block of time allowed to this, not a two-hour. We get rushed right out of there. And that, that seems like an intentional thing to me that they've created a situation where they can just close off the meeting because we have another meeting in, in an hour.